Okay, so we're going to start with polynomial functions, talking about their domain and range. So some examples of polynomial functions, really that entire front page that you're looking at there, 1 through 10, um, and even continued on to the next page, it actually goes through 15. Those are examples of polynomial functions. They are what you mainly work with, math 1 through 3. You didn't get into too many other types of functions. Okay, polynomial functions have all the exponents, uh, varying degrees. Now, when we're talking about polynomial functions, we can kind of break them into, uh, well, before I get there, let's just talk about the domain, okay? Uh, so, with polynomial functions, we're cubing numbers, we're raising numbers to the fourth power, we're squaring them, we're multiplying them by a constant, we're adding constants to the n. So, are there going to be any issues when we plug in any type of number? Is there any number that we cannot plug into this that won't give us an answer for a polynomial function? No, there, there aren't any issues, okay? Posit typically, the issues will be negative numbers sometimes. Uh, so that's the first question I ask is, if I plug in a negative number, is there anything in this function that won't give me out an answer? I can raise a negative number to any power I want to. It's going to give me an answer. Uh, now, I, don't, I can't guarantee what the answer is going to be, but it's going to give me an answer. Um, I can multiply by a constant. I can add something to the end of it. I'm always going to get an answer regardless of what I plug into this function, positive, negative, fraction. It doesn't matter. So my domain of polynomial functions is all real numbers. Now, at some point in time, I think with the radical functions, I introduced interval notation. I want to bring that back. Um, again, so all real numbers can also be expressed as negative infinity to positive infinity inside of a set of parentheses. And these are referring to x values, okay? These are domain are our x values, so just keep that in the back of your mind as well. Now, when we talk about the range of these functions, we need to break our polynomial functions down into two classes. Okay, we have odd and we have even. We have odd and we have even. Um, so the difference is when I say odd and even, I'm talking about the highest power. I'm talking about its degree. So if we're looking at number one, the highest power is x cubed. That's an odd function. Now your x cubed function typically has a shape like this. It depends on where the negative is and stuff like that. So tell me this, in terms of its y values, does it have any limitations? No, it doesn't, because on this end, on the left side here, it's continuing down for forever. It's going to hit all the y values towards negative infinity. On the right end, it's going to continue up for forever. It's going to hit all the positive numbers. So if you have an odd polynomial, its range is also all real numbers. Okay, which can also be expressed from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, even functions, if we're talking about like number 2 there, we've got x squared minus 8x plus 16. Uh, what shape is that graph? What do we call that? x squared, if, it's, if it starts with x squared, what do we call that? Graph. It's a quadratic function, but what is its graph called? It starts with p, a parabola. Okay, a parabola. We know what the shape of a parabola is. It looks like this, right? It's that curved U shape. Now, sometimes they're facing upward. If it's negative X squared, it's facing downward. Okay, well, let's think about its Y values. Will it hit every possible Y value? No, it won't. Parabolas have either a minimum value or they have a maximum value. So our range uh, for an even function, uh, now you probably haven't seen a lot of x to the fourth, but x to the fourth uh, kind of has a w shape to it. So it's also going to have a minimum, or it can be flipped the other way so that it has a maximum. Um, but it's going to have the same kind of deal where it's not going to hit every single y value, okay? Yeah, one end of it's going to 
uh, increase forever or decrease forever, but um, you're going to have a minimum or a maximum. So it depends on which one you're looking at. Um, it's either y is greater than or equal to a minimum value, or if you have a maximum, your y values are less than or equal to your maximum value. And an interval notation, that would be uh, min to infinity. Or for the maximum, it's from negative infinity to the maximum if you're doing interval notation. Now notice I use a bracket on one end of this because it can equal that minimum value. You always use a parenthesis with, with uh, infinity because infinity is not actually a number. So it's just kind of this idea of the biggest number you can imagine. To use a, a square bracket if you can include the number, which you can for the minimum or maximum, use the parentheses with infinity um, in this case. Okay? So let's actually look at this. So let's identify the domain and range of number one there, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3. It's a polynomial, so I know that my domain is all real numbers. Let me try and keep this color coded here. I know that my domain is all real numbers because I identify that as a uh, polynomial function. Now I am going to use it. I'm going to favor interval notation here uh, because we use it in calculus. Uh, the math classes over at the college use interval notation, so I just want you to become familiar with it. Now its range, I need to identify. Is it an odd or an even function? Is this one an odd or an even function? x cubed is odd, so its range is, why did I just write odd? Dear goodness, yes, its range is all real numbers. I'm trying to talk and write at the same time, and that's not always the best idea. Its range is all real numbers, so from negative infinity to positive infinity. And I apologize for erasing so much. Okay, let's look at an even function. Okay, let's look at an even function here. Okay, it's still a polynomial, so its domain is still all real numbers. Nothing has changed there. However, its range, because it is even, its range is restricted. Now, it is um, positive x to the fourth, so I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I do know that it's going to be upward facing, so I'm going to be looking for a minimum value here at either one of those uh, valleys, and I'm going to have to depend on my calculator for this. I'm going to have to plug that into my y equals and graph it. Okay, x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3. I'm going to graph it. Sometimes I may have to adjust my window. I do not in this case. So I can see right here that I have a minimum. Here's my minimum. Okay, sometimes they're more symmetric than others. This one is not symmetric. The minimums are not, the local minimums are not in the same place. This one is lower than this one over here. So I need to find out what that minimum value is. Your calculator will do that. Press second, trace. Uh, number three is minimum. It asks for a left bound. That means it wants your, your cursor to be on the left side of that minimum value. So I'm going to move it approximately over here. Yours may be in a different place, just so it's on the left side. Then move it over. It asks for a right bound. It helps if you get it close, but you don't have to have it super close. Um, just so that you know it's on the other side of that uh, valley right there. And then as for a guess, you can move your cursor. You really don't have to. I will just for the sake of getting it close to that minimum. Okay, here's our minimum. But we're talking about the range. We're talking about the y values. I don't care where it happens. I don't care about the x value. I care about the y value because I'm talking about the range. So my range is going to be... The minimum is negative point, or excuse me, negative 2.248 uh, 
Okay, I'm going to round to three decimal places, and then it hits every y value above that. Okay, both sides of this function, the left side and the right side, both increase to positive infinity. Okay, so that's how I'm going to determine the range. Huh? I'm sorry, how, how did I do what? The minimum? Okay, I'll go through it again. Okay, the minimum. Second trace. Minimum is number three. If it were a maximum, that's number four. Bless you, it asks for a left bound. So move your cursor to the left side of that minimum point right there, that valley. Um, <clears throat> you want it to be close just because that helps the calculator. And then press enter. It asks for the right bound. Move it to the right side of that valley. Press enter. It asks for a guess. You don't have to move the cursor. You can just press enter again and then it'll give you the minimum point. We don't care about the x. I'm sorry? Right bound, you need to move it to the right side. Yeah. What? Okay. So let me point. Let me move this and, and let me stand up and point. <clears throat> so when I'm doing this, and it asks for the left bound, okay? This is the minimum point. I want my cursor on the left side of that. Okay, so now over here I can have it here, I can have it here, as long as it's on the left side of that minimum value. Okay, that's good enough. I'm gonna press enter. Okay, it asks for a right bound. So here's my point. I want my cursor to be right above it, so I'm gonna move it over here on the right side of it. There are several different places that I can put it there. Then ask for a guess. Like I said, you can move your cursor to where the minimum point is, but you, you don't have to. Okay, you can just press enter again, and it's going to give you <coughs> it's going to give you that minimum value right there. Okay. Now again, we don't care about the x. Okay, that just tells us where it's happening. At x equals negative one point seven. I don't care where. I'm talking about the range, so I just want my y value. That is the smallest y value that we will get out of this function. We will get any number greater than that. <clears throat> Excuse me, when we plug in any other x value, we will get every number greater than that number right there. So that's why we identify our range as such.